Since work is such a large part of our lives, leaving any company is definitely not a small or simple decision. It doesn't help that the job hunting process is an extremely tiring one. Usually when you're looking out, you're most likely already feeling very demotivated at work, struggling to get through the day. By the time you're done with work, you still got to go back and update your resume, prepare for the interviews, take the damn interviews, and after that, it takes a mental toll on your brain, right? Like, oh my god, did I get the job? Damn it, I could have answered that question better. I think everyone kind of goes back and thinks about it. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Post-interview, you get the feeling of excitement and hope and when you don't make it, your hopes get dashed. Then you start right over again and the cycle just repeats again and again and again until you get an offer. After countless interviews and negotiations, it's always exciting to be able to finally receive an offer from a company. Should you take it? Is it better to stay? And if you do leave, what else is there to do after you resign? Well, here are the things that I considered and did before I left each company. Hi friends, my name is Jamie and I'm based in Singapore. So in my last video, I shared my story on why I decided to leave TikTok and what my takeaways were from that experience. Click here if you haven't yet watched it as it gives some context to this video. The intent of the video was really to share my learnings of my experience, but wow, I, I didn't expect to get such a huge influx of responses and such overwhelming support. I had a ton of folks reach out to me sharing that you know they really resonated with the video. Others commented that it was just enlightening in some sort of way and brought them new perspective on work. I even got some job offers which was super nice and flattering. Even though I was a little apprehensive about posting the video, I'm still glad that I put it out because I think it really gave more people out there some hope and comfort to know that you know they aren't alone in feeling this way and I think a lot of people are. So I was just really glad to be able to help with just sharing my perspective. So in today's video, I wanted to share three things I did before I officially left Google and TikTok. Number one is a pros and cons list. After I had received offers from the companies I interviewed with and had completed final negotiations with them, I took some time to reflect and write out my pros and cons list. There's just something about penning or writing your thoughts out and being able to read it. Sometimes we don't even know that we are feeling a certain way until we take the time to digest our feelings and just understand how we really feel. So in my pros and cons list, there were loads of factors that I considered and here they are. I'm not going to go through every single one of these factors, but in my opinion, the three most overlooked factors would probably be culture, duh, impact on personal life, and your intuition and gut feels. On culture, one of my next few videos will probably be focused on workplace culture, so I won't elaborate too much on this piece, but I think that having great culture impacts you more than you know. Ex-Googlers who have recently left Google also reached out to me after watching my video to share that they were also adjusting to leaving the Google bubble. Even though I've left Google for about 4 or 5 months, I still miss the, pale the, still miss the place very much and that's the kind of impact great culture has on you. Impact on personal life. Depending on which stage of life you are at, this is going to differ from person to person and again it goes back to everyone's priorities. But often, we don't realize how much of an impact work can have on our physical and mental health, our happiness, and our relationships. Take me as an example. I'm three weeks into my new job and I'm already feeling much better than I have been in the last few months. Mentally, I'm feeling much lighter. Physically, I'm slowly actually reaching my performance goals at the gym and well, here I am creating content again because I actually have the headspace to do so. Your intuition and gut feels. You know yourself best, so whatever your gut says or points you towards, it's probably right. Even if you feel it's not logical, that's what the pros and cons list is for. It's to provide you with an overview of your thoughts and reflections so you know you're making an informed decision, not a rash one. Number two, have that one-to-one -one conversation with your manager to break the news. Resigning is never easy but it should definitely be done in person if possible. Okay, given COVID, I had to do both my resignation conversations in a virtual one-to-one. -one. So everyone resigning during this time has that exception. You will eventually have to send some sort of formal letter or email in black and white stating that you are resigning, but that should happen after this conversation. 
I'm incredibly lucky to have had managers who were very supportive and understanding of my move despite the circumstances and short tenure, so I'm really grateful for that. Remember that a good manager will always have your back and encourage you to grow and explore your career options. They should not make you feel guilty about leaving and if they do so in any way, well I'd say that's a red flag and it's a good sign you should just go. Some tips to kind of prepare for that conversation. Before you even meet your manager, make sure you know what you're going to say because let's face it, it may be a challenging and maybe an awkward chat and if you don't have that psychological safety with your manager, then I guess it will be kind of scary as well. When that happens, sometimes I think you lose your train of thought. So I always think it's a good thing to write it out. To start off the conversation, make sure you show gratitude and thank them for taking care of you during your time at the company. Let them know, you know what you learned from them and share how they added value to you during your time here. And then make sure you are able to explain clearly why you decided to resign. You know, take the opportunity to have a candid conversation with them and share the reasons and any feedback you'd like. Remember, you don't want to burn bridges, so you've got to be very tactful when choosing your words. And stay professional, don't make it feel like it's a personal attack against your manager. Number three, create a good handover document without any room for confusion. I cannot emphasize this enough. When you leave and hand over things, it's incredibly important to have a detailed handover document for your manager and the next person inheriting your work to be able to refer to when you are gone. It's not only the responsible thing to do, but it also reflects on you as an individual. Remember, your personal reputation, whether it's good or bad, will follow you all throughout your working life. So, make sure you leave on a good note. My advice? Make your handover document idiot-proof and don't leave anything hanging. Make sure you provide the following points. What's the current status of this project? What's the context of this project? Is it ongoing? Is it completed? What are the documents that are kind of like involved in this project? Who are the people involved in this project? Who are the stakeholders involved in this project? Uh, what are some of the timelines or deadlines you need to meet? What are the next steps and some of your recommendations? Lastly, make sure that your manager and successor has ownership of your handover and other kind of important documents embedded within it because if they don't and you leave and they don't have access to it, then that's gonna suck. So for all the three things I've shared, I've actually made accompanying templates and guides hosted on Motion and the links will be shared in the description below. Each template has its own set of instructions so feel free to duplicate them and help you in your decision. And as a point of curiosity, let me know in the comments and share one thing that you do before you leave any company. I'd love to know. So that's it for this video. If you're looking for more resources on resume writing and interviewing, be sure to check out the playlist here. Here, I, I can never remember what side it's on. And they all come with accompanying resources. Also, I'm collating questions for my 1000 subscriber Q&A video, so please remember to drop your question in the comment below. As always, if you've enjoyed content like this, please give it a like. It really helps to support the channel. Please do subscribe if you feel this channel can add value to you and maybe if you like seeing my face. I'm just kidding. Okay, nonsense aside, thank you for watching till the end if you're still here and I'll see you in the next video.